as a coach, with this bad as thing or as rough as things were early on, how gratifying for you is it just to see the way this defense has come together the last couple? Of months? Well, you know, it's been a lot of hard work. The guys have really uh, put in the time and the work. It's been one of those seasons where, uh, you know, you have to ha have the tough times to really enjoy the good times and really understand where, you know, where you start and where you finish are not the same place. And uh, the guys have really developed. They've really come into their own. Everybody has a great understanding of, uh, of what their role is. They have a great vision of, of the type of team and type of group they want to be. And uh, it's, it's, it's all coming together at the right time. We heard from you, we heard from Pete, we heard from the leaders like Bobby and KJ that it was going to turn. What, what did you see to give you confidence in that when maybe the numbers weren't showing it? Well, you just have to play the game uh, long enough. Uh, and if you watch the games, the numbers were not telling the story. You know, the, the guys would play fantastic football for three quarters, and then we'd be up so many points, and all of a sudden, uh, you know, it wasn't as sharp as it needed to be. It was a matter of playing a full game. It's a matter of being consistent. It's a matter of uh, the right players uh, and the right group staying together and, uh, you know, having a constant uh, uh, one set of guys. And, you know, it was a revolving door by different guys coming in. But at, at, the, at the end of the day, it's about playing ball the right way, doing right longer. And uh, you just have to take your hats off to the guys of, of believing, understanding the scheme, really, uh, really uh, uh, not uh, taking uh, anything and, and uh, just deciding the type of team they wanted to be and the type of commitment that they put to it. And now, um, now all their hard work is paying off. Ben Arthur. Hey, Ken, what, what do you think maybe your father taught you about <laughs> dealing, with dealing with criticism that has maybe helped you um, deal with all the outside noise um, that comes with being a defensive coordinator in the NFL? Well, it's just, you know, like we uh, mentioned before, uh, being a part of his career from age, from birth all the way to middle school, one week, you know, he gets knocked out and everybody hates him and the whole world saying he should retire. And then the next week he, he breaks Ali's jaw and he's the toast of the town and he's the baddest man on the planet. And, uh, and, that, and that works down to me and as I'm growing up through school. Uh, one week, you know, I'm in front of the line in the lunchroom, and the next week, you know, that we have an assembly about my father and how he needs to quit, quit fighting and change, and change, change trainers and things like that. So it's just, um, it's just uh, time on task. It's just setting a great example. It's just really understanding and believing in, uh, you know, in your, in your skills, uh, the confidence and just working uh, and then having a fighter's blood you have to just keep, keep continue to fight keep your hands up and uh, um, and just just stay on course thank you Matt Calkins hey coach uh, Bobby obviously is a pretty complete player not a whole lot of areas he needs to improve on but I'm just wondering if there's one thing that you saw this year that was different from years past that he's doing where he's you know coming to his own and, and improved in a certain area well, he's, uh, like you said, he's been, you know, the complete player. He's continually getting better and better. At a time in careers where most uh, players aren't getting better, Bobby's still ascending. He's, uh, you know, a quarterback on the field. He has a great understanding of where everybody's supposed to be. He, ha he has a lot of responsibility on getting the call in, getting everybody lined up, and then being able to get his game together. And then he's the, uh, the leader, he's the spokesman, he does the, uh, the motivational speech in the locker room. This guy has a lot of hats, and he's uh, really grown into be, to being, to being a fantastic leader, player, man, uh, those type of things. And, and his, uh, his game is continually uh, growing, and uh, it's, really, it's, really, it's really great to see him become the player and uh, the man he is. Bob Gendota. Um, yeah, Ken, was there, was there one or two things you guys really did better in this game against the Rams on Sunday than maybe you've done in past games against them? Well, we kept them out of the end zone. Uh, anytime you have a team that, is, uh, that has been a prof prolific score, especially against us, they've been averaging you know, over 20 points you know, every time we played them the last few years since I've been here. Uh, this time we were able to keep them out of the end zone, something that we were really working hard on. The guys have really, you know, took in to the responsibility. They really made it a decision and commitment on just doing things right, uh, executing, playing at a high level. 
being really consistent and finishing. You know, we talked a lot about finishing, you know, the, uh, the season, the job, the game in the NFC West. And they were just focused and determined on, uh, on, on performing at a high level for whole 60 minutes. Uh, so the main thing I would say is consistency, uh, not giving up a touchdown. That's, that's really hard to do, especially since, against a team like that. And, uh, and making that decision to be that type of club. Brady. Hey, Ken, what else do you remember about watching some of those fights, the Ali fight, the, the Foreman fight? If my math is right, you would have been just a young kid at that time, right? Yes, 1973 was uh, his first fight against Ali in, uh, in San Diego. And uh, I was born in 66, so I was I a was youngster. And going all the way through uh, the rematch and the, you know, the highs and the lows, and, uh, and I'm the little kid. He was a single. He was a single uh, parent at the time, so I was just a single kid ro ro rolling around with dad, just uh, learning the ins and outs, learning the business, learning the toughness. Uh, him being a sparring partner early on, and just you know, some some weekends we eat, some sometimes we don't. Uh, but at the same time, you just have to keep on fighting. You have to have a lot of belief in yourself, a lot of confidence in in. Uh, in who you are and have a nice tight circle of people that you trust. You can't, uh, you know, you can't talk to everybody, you can't trust everybody, but you have a few, uh, few tight circle of guys and people that you trust and uh, you have a certain purpose. You have to believe in your purpose and uh, you cannot be deterred. A few weeks ago, you told us about learning to deal with adversity by watching your dad lose a fight. Was, was that the Foreman fight you were referring to? Well, he lost Foreman, uh, you know, Ernie Shavers. He lost a few fights, uh, two Ali fights. You know, there were a few fights that uh, he lost. Uh, he won a, a quite a few of them, but there were uh, uh, the losses were the toughest because uh, the people around were the ones who, uh, who responded uh, more so than we did at home. Um, but all of them were hard. Uh, and t when you're involved as a son and family, the families take a lot of the, lot of the toughness. They take a lot of the, uh, the heartache and the pain, and deal with the public a whole lot more than the, than the uh, actual athlete does. So it's harder on the families. And being a single parent, and and being a single kid at the time, uh, it was uh, it was it was it was a learning process. That now as an adult and going through my own career, and now as a coach, now you see all how those things have all prepared me for uh, the position I'm in. Do you, do you follow boxing still? Absolutely. Absolutely. Who's your guy? Uh, well, you know, the, the boxing is different. Uh, it was fun to see Tyson, you know, fight, fight, uh, you know, Roy Jones again, because that's kind of the old school guys. But uh, I'm just a fan of the, of the sport. I'm a fan of the, you know, the footwork and the, uh, how, it can, how there's so many things that carry over to the football and the, uh, the mind frame and the confidence and the, the ability to be, you know, a really tough guy. Uh, but I'm just a, a, a fan of the sport itself and no, no one particular person. Thanks. I want to ask you about Nate Robinson and uh, the other guy. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Michael Sean. Hey, Ken, what have you learned about and perhaps grown to like about the way DJ Reed is built uh, mentally? Well, it's, uh, you know, that's a really uh, fun, fun guy to talk about. He's, he's so focused. He's so determined. He's really uh, has a high, high uh, IQ. He has a high idea of himself. He has, he's so confident in his ability. Uh, you can tell by, by the way he, he studies, the way he asks questions, and the way he really focuses on the answer, and then how he turns it into you know, great plays on the field. He really gets focused on, on, on game. He really understands the receivers and the coverages that, uh, that we're running. And it's just fun to watch him grow and play and then just uh, and make and be the type of player he is. He's been a really, really great surprise for us. Really impact player, and uh, really excited. Uh, you know the games that he plays and things that he's been able to do. I'm gonna pose that same question. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I caught me off guard. Uh, I want to pose that same question to you about the mental makeup of Jordan Brooks and what you've grown to know and maybe to like about how he's built there. Well, that's a little different because Jordan is a rookie, you know, and everything's new for him. And he's kind of learning the, the highs and lows and, and the way the pros work, the way we practice, how to turn in our walkthrough practices and the non-contact practices, all the mental, all the Zoom, and then turn it into a physical day on Sunday. So those things for him is uh, it's, it's a learning experience. He has the, uh, 
he has to act like a rookie. At the same time, he has to act like a starter. At the same time, he has uh, Bobby and KJ and, and Jamal and, and uh, Diggs, all these great veterans to learn from. At the same time, he wants to be himself. So it's so many different dynamics he's going through. Now you can tell at the end of the season, he's really starting to come into his own. Uh, he's playing a lot more. And a team like this that we're playing that plays a lot of base personnel where he plays mostly at his, uh, you know, his time to play, you should see him a lot more. So uh, he's only tip of the iceberg. This kid, is uh, he has a lot to give, and he's just getting started. Aside from keeping them out of the end zone, was there one thing you particularly loved about rewatching the goal line stand? Uh, you know, in, in a career, in a player's career, you don't get many a goal line stands. You know, it, it doesn't happen that way. But anytime you get a, the uh, the chance to hold them on first down, second down, third down, and so it's just one inch, um, and everybody has a certain role to play. And um, anytime you get involved in something like that, you, you don't forget that. You don't forget that, and the guys understand that. And uh, that was a great moment for our confidence, great moment for uh, the ability to keep a team like that out of the end zone. It's something that uh, you know I'll never forget, and they'll never forget. All right. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.